Okay, so now that you've got your calendar set up on your computer and you've enabled iCloud, we're going to start to create some calendars. So I've disabled mine for the time being. And what I'm going to show you here is how to recreate those. So I've got all kinds of stuff in here, so I'm not going to delete them per permanently, but I am going to show you how to recreate them. So the reason that you might want to have more than one is because you have the ability to share them with certain people and color code them as well. You'll see that I have three that I use most often, the red, blue, and green. Red is for appointments, so this is my work calendar. And I don't share that because it's mine and mine only. I use the family and personal calendar here, and I share that with my husband and the kids so they know what appointments go where and personal obligations and birthday parties and things like that that we need to attend. And you'll see sports and school and on this calendar is where I put all of my kids functions. Um, it's their, their baseball games and football games and school band recitals and you know all that good stuff. So that way I can share that with grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles and they will be updated in real time when anything on that schedule changes. So I'm going to show you how to go ahead and set all those up. Pretty simple. You're going to come up here and click File. You're going to come down here to New Calendar. We're going to do it on the cloud so that it syncs between all of our devices and we have the ability to share it. And click Event Calendar. And for the sake of it, we're going to say School and Oops. Okay, so we've got the school and sports just set up. Nothing really has happened with it yet. So we're going to right click there and select Get Info. So that's going to bring us back to this screen. We can do a description if we want. All the stuff the kids are involved in. So it is going to affect our availability because if it's a function that the kids are going to be at, we need to be there too. And I'm going to select Share Calendar. I am going to share it down here with the following people. And this way I can input their email address. So we're going to say Aunt Zoe here. Zoe Smith. Oh. Uh oh, what happened? Okay, click enter. Now, here you'll see allow write. We don't want to allow Aunt Zoe to write in this case because if she accidentally moves or deletes an event on her calendar that's attached to our calendar, it will move ours as well. So basically, writing gives whoever whoever has that little box checked, the ability to control the events in that calendar. We don't want anybody to control those. We want to be the controller of these events, so we are going to uncheck that. We're going to select OK, and what's going to happen is Aunt Zoe is going to get an email that allows her to open up these events, open up this calendar, look at it, and she can choose to add it to her calendar if she wants, or she could always just go back to that email to see the kids' sports schedules. So you'll just go ahead and recreate as many calendars as you need, color code them, share them if you'd like to share them, or keep them private if you'd like to keep them private, whatever works best for you. I'm going to go ahead and do a event calendar for, and I'm just going to call it work stuff. And I'm going to not share that one because that's just for me. And I'm going to add an event here. So we're going to say new event. I'm going to add an appointment that I have with a client. Oops. I didn't want to do that. Oh, why does that happen? Oh, that's my default calendar. That's why. New event. Okay, stop doing that. Okay. 
Now that we have those set up, I would like to add an appointment to my work stuff calendar. So the majority of appointments that I'm going to add to my calendar are going to be work related. So I want to make sure that that's my default calendar. I'm going to come up here to BusyCal, select Preferences, and on this General tab, down here it says Default Calendar for Events. I'm going to select that and make sure it says Work Stuff. And that's all I need there. And you can change things like the date that your week starts on, how often or how much of your calendar you want to, excuse me, how much you want to see at a time, all that good stuff. So feel free to play around in there. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and do that default calendar, click out of there. And now here, I'm going to add an appointment on the 19th for a work-related item. So you can just double click there and appointment with Mrs. Smith. Now over here to the right, you're going to see that appointment is on the 19th. It starts at 9 a.m. I want to make sure that we give ourselves two hours there. It's on my work stuff calendar. That's correct. I'll, I like my alarms. It reminds me that I've got something coming up just in case I'm involved in a different activity. I like that reminder. You can choose your reminder. No attachments and no attendees. Attendees is if you want to mail that event to somebody so that they can be notified when it's happening. Sometimes I'll send an email to that client just as a confirmation. And you can put their email address in here if you so choose. So that's it. It's super simple, real easy. You can add appointments to any one of your calendars. You want to see that. So we're looking at the month view here. Let's go ahead and real quick take a look at the week view. I like this view on my big screen because I can see what's going on from day to, one day to the next. So I might do an event here, okay, an appointment there, and I can click on that and maybe that one's going to be all day. Oh, they changed their mind. We want to take that and move it over here. No problem. We're going to meet them here instead. So it's really user friendly beautiful interface to use and it syncs among all your devices. So this is my go-to calendar app for everything. I've been using this for years. I think you're going to love it. And on the next video, I'm going to show you how to do your BusyCal to-do list. And this is really the key to productivity. So join me there and I will show you how that's done.